This video is sponsored by Carly. Use my link in the video description to get 15% off your very own OBD reader. It is too early to be away. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 7 Series and to a very tired Joel and also a neighbourhood which is probably going to be phoning the police any second now because the time is 4.35am and uh, we're about to start this straight piped V12. Let's get this over and done with, shall we? Now joining us in the back of the 7 Series is my friend Ben Rain, who is tired. accompanying me on this journey. You know what, Ben? That wasn't fully cold. Wasn't it? No, that is... That seemed louder than it did at midnight when yeah, we went for our we, ride. We took this car out last night about three and a half hours ago because... Well, actually, it wasn't. It didn't start. So we had to jump start it at half twelve this morning take it for a 20 minute drive to make sure the battery was charged for now and it started first time no problem but it's actually still a little bit warm so that wasn't a full cold start which I'm sure my neighbours sorry it is a bit antisocial isn't it anyway as you can see from the title of the video today's agenda is driving to Germany and the Nürburgring ever since I bought this car it's sort of the pilgrimage I wanted to make to Germany not just for the Nürburgring, what actually I'm more excited about is the autobahns, the de-restricted sections of motorway where we can, well, max this thing out. So I've put the sat-nav in uh, for our destination in Germany here, as you can see on the screen. What I'm actually just going to quickly do is uh, reset the trip data. That was too early to be playing with an iDrive system from 2007. We'll start reset that, and now there's someone behind me. Let's get going. Back on navigation. As you can see, we've got a total of 430 miles to cover. So I wonder if we can do on one tank, but realistically, I'm not going to try. And uh, oh, Ben's hijacked my navigation menu. <laughs> I can see it on the screen. I, I want to I watch each mile. You're monitoring our progress. That's good. So anyway, first port of call is a Euro tunnel uh, crossing. We've got to be there at 6.20. So it's the reason for the nice and early start. So hopefully no traffic. I mean, there won't be, will there? Although, mm, this is the United Kingdom. And, yeah, go down to Folkestone now. Jump on the train to Calais. And then Germany. <laughs> wakey, wakey. <laughs> in the Euro Tunnel entrance here to get to Calais. Uh, make good time. We've actually done 91 miles at an average of 24.3 mpg. Currently the car is saying we've got 339 miles to go to Herresbach where we're staying in Germany. It's probably the wrong pronunciation. And 372 miles of, of range. So on that maths we uh, would make it on this tank. However, I think as soon as we get into Europe you can go a little bit faster. And then Germany of course there's a bit of de-restricted autobahn today. So I would uh, be very surprised if that range doesn't, doesn't go down and we uh, don't need to fill up. So excuse my attire, it's still extremely early. It's 6.22 a.m. Uh, had a nice rundown in the seven to get here. Ben's actually been sitting. Very Hello Ben, how's it been? Very nice. You've got a nice setup. He was actually doing some editing on the way here, but this seven series is just the ultimate cruiser and the ultimate autobahn cruiser, which actually we'll be able to find out on this trip. Anyway, it's 6.22. I think we're on the 7.20, so I think we need to go, actually. This never gets not exciting. I always love coming on the Eurotunnel. I think this is probably the fourth or fifth time I've done it now, and I hope to do many, many more trips. So fun. But this car 
as you know, is over five metres long. So it'll be interesting to see how difficult or not um, we're going on the upper deck. It'll be interesting to see how this is to get up here. Looks like, I think Ben, we're at the first, uh, first, one in. first one in, which means we'll be the first out. Oh no, we're not. And top tip for this, if you have electric mirrors, tilt them all the way down so you can see exactly where your wheels are because it is rather narrow up here. I think we've only got about two inches each side, but it looks okay. It's these bits that are tricky where the uh, thing sticks out. Uh, so narrow. Ah, I just curved it. <laughs> Has to be done. What are you going to do? Kick you off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and with all COVID at the moment, you can't actually leave the car like you normally would be able to during the crossing. But we're in a long wheelbase with reclining seats in the back, so I'm sure we can make ourselves nice and comfortable for the 30 or so minute journey. Oh, it's exciting. Zero tunnel oh, yeah. I've ever done. Yeah, it's quite nice. I'm literally, isn't it? I could sleep. Yeah, we should but, have done to be fair, but it was a really quick journey. Yeah, it's only 30 minutes or so. It's, it could mm. be longer, couldn't it? Although, having said that, we are here now, so I've got to try and get back in the, the front of the car. That's the only problem because you you can't get out the car at all, so you have to sort of. I mean, I guess most people through. don't have a long wheelbase to get in the back of, do they? No, I suppose not. Um, so I'm going to get in the front now. I think I'm going to change the units on the car to kilometres an hour. Smart. And also on the autobahn runs, it's more precise, isn't it? Mm. I'm. I want to. I'm interested because this car's limited to 155 supposedly, but de-restricted. It's that there's various forums that say it'll do 188. Okay. As far as I'm aware, this is still. Restricted, standard. restricted, but, but you never know. I've been in cars before that have that limit, and they do keep going to maybe one six. And BMW lie about their figures all the time, anyway. We'll see. I'll be, I'll be surprised if it hits a limiter at one fifty five. But either way, ever since I bought this car, I've just, it just feels like it would sit those speeds so happily. Mm. I've just wanted to do it forever. Well, today's the day. Potentially, we can yeah. do it legally. Beautiful. Right. Wish me luck. Watch your cameras. <sighs> You're about to hit it. Duck. Oh, you've hit it. Good one. So dignified, Joel. I'm, I've got to say, I'm nicely reclined in the back. It's good, isn't it? Mm. I'm actually looking forward to um, like to you driving at yeah, some I'm, point. I'm actually looking forward to driving it, to be fair. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to sitting there, mate. Oh. You know what? One day I'd love to do, and see what you guys say to this, a 24 hour driving challenge. So we drive non stop for 24 hours. See how far you maybe get. two or three of us, and you do it in shifts. Yeah. Three hour stints, get in the back, have a rest. Next see driver. See how far you can get away from home. So you can rest for six hours at a time if there's three people. Cool. And then, yeah, literally, we, we set a. I mean, we set something for like Russia and just see how far east we can get. Jesus Christ. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should do that. Yeah. Maybe we should do that. Yes. Let's get going, baby. Imagine now it says transmission fault. That's all right, because I've got my Carly adapter with me. Oh, lovely. That's right, I do indeed have my Carly OBD reader, and it is with massive thanks to Carly that this video is sponsored by them. Once again, I've worked with them over a number of years now, and they've always been fantastic and it is such a brilliant product which I will show you a little bit about now. Make sure if you do want one you use the link in the description to get yourself 15% off the OBD reader.
Now this little tiny tool here has got me out of so many sticky situations because of its massive amount of capabilities. It can read the car, it can read the codes, fault codes, reset warning lights. You can code different things such as on BMWs like the angel eye headlights and you can put the daytime running light indicators on and amongst a number of other things. But it is extremely simple to use, which is what I like about this product so much and is paired with the app, which I'll show you a little bit of now. First thing to do, is to plug the OBD reader in. In this car, it actually comes with a cover for the OBD reader, which is very, very posh indeed. Let's get that off. On the Carly app, you can create a number of different profiles if you have different cars, because this does work more or less with every type of car. Obviously today we're in my 2007 BMW 7 Series, so that's the profile I've selected. And it's very simple to just connect to the adapter by pressing the button here. It will connect to the adapter, then connect to the car, and you'll be ready to go. The most important thing on a car like this, which is extremely technical with tons of ECUs and God knows what else going on, is a health check. And you can do that by clicking here. You can check for issues and it will basically read every single ECU on the car to see if there are any problems. I know I've got a couple of little warning lights, but it's uh, with good luck, I suppose, right now that this car is performing fantastically. But I would never leave for a big trip like this Nürburgring trip without taking the adapter because it does enable you to reset fault codes should they arise or if something's going wrong with the car and you can feel it even without a fault code you can have the peace of mind that you can read it and it will pretty much I mean I've, it's always identified the issue it's been very very good the diagnostics check is completed and it's actually saying that the health status of this car is bad we've got seven issues of which you can click further into apparently something with my DSC the CD changer parking brake security module and telephone uh, bizarre but in other words nothing particularly <laughs> to worry about so we can clear all those issues now and then if I was to check the car again hopefully it would come up as clear and then maybe in a few days time I could check the car once more and if those issues came back then I'd know it's a recurring thing another thing which I found particularly useful in recent times which I've never really used on this app before is the live data you can see the engine parameters even things like the gearbox temperature which, as you know, in this car, it has been playing up a little bit over recent times. And so I've been using this as I'm driving to see what's going on. I've got engine speed, motor temperature, correction factor for the amount of fuel, ambient temperature, oil kilometers, and current throttle angle selected at the moment. But you can have a whole load of other things like battery voltage, coolant temperature, engine speed, exhaust camshaft position. There's tons of stuff on here which I don't even know what it is. You can even check the O2 sensors and things like that. So if you suspect something's going on there, you can have a look at the readings. But I found that particularly useful lately when I've been having these issues with the gearbox and the engine to see what's going on. And basically it's allowed me to keep driving the car because it gives me peace of mind that nothing severe is amiss. Now it is true that if you were to go to a BMW specialist or even a main dealer just for a simple code reading with a few warning lights, they'd probably charge you the best part of 100 quid to do that, maybe a little bit less. But the simple fact of the matter is that you buy this product and you pay an annual subscription to it, but you get the money back so quickly. It says on here that over the three, four years or so that I've been using this, uh, this product, I've saved about 3,800 euros worth of money because of all the times I've checked the codes, reset them, used the live data and the rest of it. So needless to say, over three years of using this where it's cost me a matter of hundreds, it's actually saved me thousands. So it is a very, very good product to have. Like I say, I would never ever leave for a long trip without this product in any of my cars. Um, it's super, super useful. And I'd say the main thing is just that peace of mind it gives you. Peace of mind, something very important for this Nürburgring trip where you're gonna see I was taking this to its top speed on the Autobahn and also going round the Nürburgring. I want to have this product with me so that if anything should happen during these, these um, occasions, I'll be able to read the code straight away and see what's going on. But fingers crossed, everything is all good. As I think I've shown you in this car before in a previous sponsored video from Carly, you can also do some coding functions. And on my BMW Z4, for example, it allowed me to open and close the roof using the key fob, which was something that wasn't available on that car from factory. On this car, then you can code the tailgate module, which allows you to actually close the tailgate with the button on the key, as well as open it, which is all you can actually do from standard with this car. 
pretty nice to have. You can code various things on the instrument cluster, as well as going into the iDrive and configuring things in there and changing stuff with the lights outside. I have it so that the indicators, and in fact, every single light on the car comes on when I unlock it, which is just very nice to be greeted by, especially when opening the car at night. Look, it's a really good product. Go on their website for more details if you want to have a look. I can only include a very, very basic few things that the, the product includes in this short sponsored segment. But as I say, if you do go ahead and decide you want to get yourself one of these OBD readers, for now at least you can get 15% off using the code in my description on this video. And yeah, please, please do go ahead and get one because I really cannot recommend it enough. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Okay, let me take this off. And this is, I just love this, the fact that you can just get on a train and drive off and you're in, there we go. We're in France. This is amazing, isn't it? It's awesome, mate, I absolutely love it. Just if so only easy. there was a, a supersonic train that went yeah. under the Atlantic and you could, HS2. you know, in, in a few hours, do the same thing, but the States, I mean, imagine that. Oh my God. Okay, so very important process here. Try Got on. an old GB badge from last year. I'm gonna stick it on the 7 Series. I reckon bottom left of the window. But here we are in France. You just wrapped a whole car by yourself, Ben, so you should be able to do this, right? Oh, it's really wonky. <laughs> That's what you get. Oh, it's really That looks wonky. awful. <laughs> it's an improvement. It's better. Yeah. It looks okay. awful though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's awful. I hate that. I have to do that. Okay, so we are now through France. We're in Belgium and actually not far from the German border. Ben's been driving for the last two hours or so. I did a two hour stint beforehand. I think he's quite tired now. So he's gone to get a coffee. I'm gonna take the wheel. And I think maybe in the next half an hour or so, we'll be on some German autobahn. So we can really start to stretch the legs of this seven series. Something I've genuinely wanted to do since I bought the car because it just lends itself so well to cruising at high speeds. So it's really exciting actually. Car seems to be performing well. It's been in for loads of work lately, so hopefully it's all good. And yeah, I'm just really excited to get into Germany. It's one of my favorite places in the world. And of course, later on today, I think we'll have enough time to uh, do that on the Nürburgring. So great day ahead. I'm gonna jump in the front now and find some German autobahn. Right, so the route has taken us slightly differently to how I'd normally get to the Nürburgring today. And we've actually come right past the Spa de Fruchon circuit. Sorry for the horrific pronunciation, but I'm a big F1 fan and obviously they raced here, well, I guess about a month ago now. Well, I say raced, if you saw that, you'll know exactly what I mean. It was barely a race, it was a parade behind a safety car. Nonetheless, I don't know this area at all, but I know the track is just through the trees there. So I'm just gonna follow this dirt road down and see we can get a view of the circuit because I guess it's just another thing to tick off the list that I've seen. Interestingly, and well, not that interesting, but about a week ago I flew to Cyprus and on the plane I got a really clear view of this circuit and actually got a video of it. So it will just be really surreal if we see the circuit today. Although it looks like I'm taking Ben somewhere to murder him at the moment. This is definitely a doggy location. <laughs> <laughs> it said car parks this way, didn't it? Are know. we going to get stuck in this? Maybe. Oh, God. See that, Ben? Well, looks like the... Right going down there, you know? Well, it depends where it goes. That's all right. I can see, look, you can see the pit straight. Oh, man. Just left the car running there. Uh, okay. So, guys, it seems like there's some sort of uh, event going on today, or maybe just practice, oh. practice sorry, or testing. But yeah, we're right by the first corner and then down on the big run up to Eau Rouge. And that looks like a GT3 that's just gone past there. This is crazy, we'd look, just standing in the middle of these woods, looking at the track. Would have been awesome to be here for the F1. Actually, well, no, it wouldn't because it was just a parade lap. There goes an R35 GTR out the pits. What a cool place. 
definitely want to come back here, spend a bit more time. road trips. I just love them. Okay, let's give it a little go. Let's get the speedo in kilometres there. You can see the speedo in miles now on the analogue display. On about a quarter power at the moment, just slowly pushing it. That's 200 kilometres so easily. 110, it's 135 miles per hour and it's completely, completely effortless. Just hold it at 200 here. And it's a little bit straighter and clearer at the moment, so back up slowly to 200 km's. And if we're clear ahead, which we're not quite, that's 215. I'm still only on about a quarter throttle here. 220, 230. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're in a 7 series. 250, 255, and it's the limiter. Uh, that's it. 258. We are now at the Nürburgring, and of course, 
we've made it in such good time today that we've got plenty of time to do a lap or two right now. Uh, in truth, we've stopped off at the accommodation for a couple of hours. The car's cooled down nicely. And although I might get carried away, the plan now is to do a parade lap, just to sort of get used to the track again, get used to how this car feels uh, under a bit of under a bit of stress and just have a laugh really because it is so funny bringing this car here so anyway i've got my laps on the on the card and that's it we're ready to go we'll go uh, with dtc traction control obviously fully off and we're in sports mode here <laughs> <laughs> the photographer, the photographer looked up from his camera. He had to like, double take. <laughs> okay, and we're carrying about 80 miles an hour into here. Jeez. The car is on Michelin Pilot Sport fours, so I expect it to handle quite nicely. And just slowly through here, about a quarter throttle on the exit. Keep that on. Let off. And hard turn into here. <laughs> and it is scripping so well, this car. Oh my god. And this is probably my favourite part of the track. I'm just going to short shift. I take it flat round here. That's 115 miles per hour. I'm going to brake before the hill because I don't know what these brakes are like. Jeez. Hot is what they're like. Trying to stop a heavy car is what they're like. You remember the G forces here? Ooh. Go up. Yeah, it's up. Series long wheelbase limo. Oh my god. I'll stop at this bridge. Yeah. Eleven minutes and twenty six seconds. <laughs> I really I really want to absolutely push it because I think this would throw some shapes. Yeah. <laughs> so yes we are here at the Nürburgring with the 7 Series I can't quite believe it when I was here last year in my Z4 I never thought I'd be bringing a limo to the Nürburgring it's different it's quite funny the looks that I'm getting as well it's very odd looks people are not expecting to see that sort of car here in GT3 country anyway that was a lot of fun doing a little soft lap We'll have to see about the brakes again, whether they can hold their own 
for the next few days. But tomorrow, it is the GP circuit, which is open on the track, I believe. So we'll be doing some laps then with a few little fun twists. I want to experience the Nürburgring from the back of the car as well, let's just say that. So do stay tuned. Of course, if you're not subscribed already, do hit the subscribe button now. Like, leave a comment and all that good stuff. And I'll see you all very, very soon.